Hello and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Holly Wharton. I've been an entrepreneur since 1999 and I know firsthand how difficult it can be to build a business without the right mindset. This is a podcast for those of us who struggle with showing up in our business with confidence and authenticity, who resist taking big action because of fears and doubts, who know deep down that it's possible to create something bigger and yet you're not. This podcast combines powerful strategies on how to upgrade your business mindset along with practical business tips to grow your business more easily in a way that feels aligned. This podcast features solo shows with me and also interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world, including my monthly co-hosted episodes with Joe Casey. My goal is to help you grow your business more quickly and easily by transforming your mindset. For me, mindset work is a lifelong practice, and I want to help you make a habit out of mindset work. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, let's get into this week's episode. Hello, and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast, episode 233. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another co-hosted episode with the fabulous Joe Casey. Today, we talk about transparency in business. You know what I mean, being open and clear with no manipulative hidden agenda lurking around in your business copy, on your website, in your sales conversations, in your business. Unfortunately, there are plenty of business owners out there who still operate from a place of manipulation and lack of transparency. So today, Joe and I talk about specific instances in which we're tired of seeing this lack of transparency. We talk about what transparency is, how it shows up in business, why it's so important in business, what lack of transparency looks like, again, sharing specific instant incidents that have occurred recently in our business transactions with other people. We talk about how you can be more transparent in business and how to know when you're being transparent and when you aren't. So I hope you find this really interesting. I've been thinking about this topic and actually almost did this topic on my own yesterday when I was recording the previous episode that I did on my own. But I thought, no, no, this is a juicy topic. I'm going to save this to talk with Joe. And happily, she agreed. So hope you find this episode interesting and useful. I really think this is a really important topic. And it's something that we need to keep in mind as we're running our businesses. So without further ado, here we are. Hello, this is Holly Wharton, and I'm back with Joe Casey for another co-hosted episode. I'm so excited for the topic that we're talking about today. We will be talking about transparency and how transparency is so important in business. So we're going to talk about some specific areas of business where we see people not being transparent, why that's not such a great thing for your business and what to do instead, how you can be transparent. So hello, Joe. Hi. I'm so excited for today. I am excited about today. We uh, we quite often kind of just check out, are we still okay to talk about about this? And then we, <laughs> we kind of pull all our points together. And this is one of those. There's a, oh, we have a lot to say on this. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so maybe we should start by saying, what is transparency? Mm. So what do you see as the definition of transparency in business or in general? I think certainly for business, it's about showing the, being kind of upfront, mm-hmm. being kind of Treating people like adults and laying out the real picture and the, the real situation, the real transaction. So one, one of the things that we met, we talked about in our kind of preamble was the ways that some things just hit us the wrong way or can seem really off. And a lot of that is because some part of the transaction is hidden or yes. un, until a certain point. And that is, that is well dodgy. And also I think people are getting a lot more wise to it. So transparency touch is on on a number of things that it's about showing all of the relevant information I think and all of the, the relevant parts rather than keeping some of them secret and then revealing them at the end or just keeping them secret and not revealing them and it, it being a kind of fraud is probably too strong a word <laughs> but definitely a kind of that, that's, I'm not sure I trust this because that's clearly not the full picture I'm seeing. Yeah, to me, transparency is a lack of that hidden agenda Mm. or manipulative element Mm. from that you get from withholding information. 
Yeah. And it's annoying and it makes me lose trust in people. It's so a really fast way of uh, losing people's trust. Exactly. And I think people are getting wise to that. So why is transparency so important in business? Well, because I mean, especially if you're a, I was going to say, especially if you're a service-based business, but that's not true, actually. Mm. I think any business, I think trust is a, some of your most valuable currency. Yes. You know, if I lose trust in a in an organization or if I lose trust in a person, then I'm not willing to give them my investment, whether that be financial investment, certainly not time and emotional investment. Mm-hmm. And especially with the, the, the clients that, that we work with and the folks who listen to this podcast, you know, we're, we're healers, we're coaches, we're heart-based entrepreneurs, and it's all relationship-based. And so yes. those relationships have to be formed on a bedrock of trust. And if you don't have that, then you're screwed, basically. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, if I don't trust someone, I'm not going to want to hire them as a coach or buy their product or because it might be a waste of time and money because I can't trust them. Yeah. And I'm not going to recommend that person. Yeah. Um, I might even actively not recommend yes. them. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. What's that old adage we used to use in, in customer service in the days when I did retail? It's like, you know, a happy customer will tell one other person and an unhappy yeah. p- customer will tell 10. Yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, and, and what amazes me is just how many of the kind of dinosaur marketers, because I do think it's that old school marketing that is now on its way out. How Mm. many of them have been so playing roughshod with people's trust? Yes, exactly. It's almost been manipulation, influence, as it's obviously sometimes euphemistically called, has been the norm which they've used without any compulsion and i think people are are now wise to it i I think that that style of marketing really is on on the way out Mm, thankfully finally Mm. it's like it breaks that sense of connection that you might feel with someone through reading their website or their blog post Mm. or their sales page or whatever it it just kind of damages the relationship yeah or the potential relationship Mm -hmm. So I think it's worth us talking a little bit about some instances of what what does lack of transparency look like in business? What are the kinds of things that people need to look out for and, and think about when they're running their business? Mm. Well, you had a good example. Before yeah, I've got a couple. So recently I was invited to participate with a chapter in a book. And I've done this a couple of times before. And so I thought, you know, this is great. I love this. This is a fun project. Sounded really interesting. So I got an email saying, you know, I'd love to have you participate with a chapter in this book on this particular topic. If that sounds interesting, please book in a time to have a a little chat about it. So I thought, great, book in the time. After that, she comes back with another email with a link to learn more about the project. I click on the link and I immediately see that it's, you've got this investment of like, I don't know, $400 or so to participate with a chapter in this book. And I just thought, no, why did you not tell me that from the beginning? Do not like that. So I wrote back, so I canceled the call, wrote back to her and I said, thanks so much. But after looking at that link, it's not a good fit. She came back and said, why is it not a good fit out of curiosity? And I said, you know, I really did not like that you were not upfront with the beginning that there was an investment in this. You know, this is not an invitation to participate in a book. It's an invitation to pay you. And of course, I understand there are costs in producing a book, but I did not like the fact that she was not upfront with that in the very first email. And she was kind of surprised by that, which I found interesting. I I was really, really annoyed by it because it sounded like such a great project. And I thought, oh, you just lost. I just lost all interest the second I saw that there was a cost and that she hadn't been upfront about that. Yeah, that is that. Sucks. I'm, I was going to say I'm surprised that she was surprised, but actually I'm not. Because if you think of a lot of the way that some MLM organizations yeah. work, it's about that, you know, I, I'm sure I've shared this story before. It was a, a friend of mine who I'd done some some training with but hadn't seen for a few years. I bumped into her at another event and I said, yeah, what are you doing? And she was doing this. It was this kind of MLM thing, but I'd never heard of them. It was a mm-hmm. based one. And I was just making conversation and asking about it. And she said, well, you know, why don't you come along? I'm, you'll get to see, uh, we're having um, a meeting not far from you because I, I, I lived about 50 miles away from where this event was. 
well, we're actually doing one about five miles away from, from where you live. It was in, in my town. And you'll get to see, and she mentioned a couple of other people that I also knew from different events who I was also really fond of and, of and hadn't seen for ages. And I thought, oh, how lovely. And in my mind, I thought, they're having a meeting. There's going to be just a few of them. I'm going to meet them for like tea or for coffee or something. Mm-hmm. And I turn up. And it's, it's, it's a hotel. And I thought, oh, it's like, you know, having, having tea in, in the hotel, not, not a problem. And it's this big event for an MLM company and it's like three hours long. And I sat Ooh. there and I went through, I think every emotion in the book, none of them good. First of all, I was just shocked and a bit bewildered. And then I was really angry. And then I felt really sad because I felt so stupid mm. for the fact that I thought, I, I thought you were my friend and you wanted to, to meet up. And then I got annoyed yeah. again. Um, yeah. You know, they may have been the greatest products in the world, but I was never going to buy from that company because exactly. it, it just felt deceitful and manipulative and yeah. horrible. I really didn't like it. And that's what they teach. I'm yes. embarrassed to say that I briefly attempted um, an MLM thing I back when I was training as a coach. Yeah. <laughs> back when I was training as a coach, I tried the products, loved them, and I thought – this is the kind of product I would rave about to people anyway, because I just Mm -hmm. think they're so great. So why not get, you know, a referral commission for it? But I couldn't do it. And my upline manager was just so aggressive and she made a living out of this. You know, Mm -hmm. she was able to help her husband quit his job. They were just living off her income because she was making so much money from this. Then he decided to do it. And so they were making even more money. Like it was working for her, but it was not, the style was not working for me. And the way she taught me to book these calls with people was to not give them any information, just tell them to catch up. I have this really great thing I'm doing. I'd love to chat. And I hate it. Oh God, my stomach just turned. And I'm so embarrassed to say that I booked some calls with people and they were very kind and polite, but I just hated Mm. the fact that I like manipulated them into having a meeting, talking. It was so awful. I'm so glad I got out of that as soon as I did. It just, the whole style felt awful because we're just recommending these products to people. I can do that because I love recommending stuff that I love, but the way they go about it, the way they teach you is just so non-transparent and manipulative. Yeah. There is a style of that in the kind of online marketing world as well. Yeah. You know, the book invitation is one example. There's also the way that, you know, sales calls are quite often taught. You get people on to just a 30 minute chat, see how I can help you. And it's like 30 minutes of hard sell. And, Mm. you know, if you say it's going to be a 30 minute chat or it's going to be an intake call or it's going to be a free call, then make it be a free call. Like not me. But that's another thing that is taught to folks. I think the other thing, apart from the fact that it's really icky and really manipulative, I think people are really getting wise to it now. Yes. It's not working and it's annoying people because there are enough people who are starting to do things a different way Mm -hmm. and who can be open and transparent and still make their business work. And and we're seeing that there's another way and we don't have to fall prey to these Mm. manipulative marketing techniques anymore. Yeah. So other thing, what what are some other things you've seen in business that annoy you? I know when we were talking before we got on the recording, you mentioned webinars, which I think is a big, big thing. So now you and I at the time, because I've run webinars with you, I've attended your webinars, which is <laughs> for me. We sweat blood over our webinars. Yeah. You know? And yet the number of hours that I've wasted in my life showing up for this webinar that is promised, not one of yours, mm. obviously. Yeah. There's promise to teach me X, Y, Z and the new way of blah, 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 and how to do this. And there's a formula that some of them follow, which mm-hmm. is... 20 minutes of all about me, my rags to riches story, how I was broke and now I'm wildly successful just using this system. 10 minutes of really high overview of something generic or this is why my system is so great. 20 minutes of case studies and then 10, 15 minutes of hard pitching, usually with a early sign up bonus, sign up now. If you do it in the next 10 minutes, the first 10 people who sign up. And it's like, I have like nothing from that. Mm-hmm. I've been waiting for these nuggets that will, that will teach me to do something. And I, I, I just, I, I hate them. Yeah. And again, I think it's one of those that just aren't working in anything like the same way that they, they were. They're not converting in the same way that they were. And I, I've actually seen a number of people who I really respect and who I know do really kind of quality stuff move over to doing more of a, a masterclass model where they'll charge a 
anything $35 to $100, depending on the, the length of the class. But it's a proper class you're paying for. Mm-hmm. This isn't and just... you're, you're actually learning stuff yes. that you can implement and use. Exactly, exactly. And actually, I'd, I prefer that. Mm. I prefer it to say, okay, I'm paying my $40 or, you know, my $100. I know I'm getting solid stuff that I can use and it's not going to be a waste of my time because our, our time is increasingly precious yes. to us. You know, mm-hmm. you're not going to get that hour back. Mm. And I love the concept of paying for a masterclass mm. or an online training like that because if I'm paying money, I'm going to trust that I'm actually going to get a useful, interesting, Mm -hmm. applicable information that can help me with my business or whatever the topic is Mm -hmm. on. And it's going to be a good investment of my time. Um, I feel like that fee is kind of more of a guarantee of actually receiving some kind of substance. So I think that's actually a really, really good tactic. Yeah. And it's, it, it makes it a much more, I think, adult to adult transaction. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm going to pay you some money for the time that you have invested putting this together and for your knowledge and what you're going to impart to me. Whereas if it's, it's free, then where is the benefit to you, the person running the webinar? The only benefit to you is get my email address or sell me something. Yeah. Which is fine if folks are upfront about that. Mm-hmm. But very yeah. often they're not. It, and, and that's what becomes really frustrating. Mm. You know, a lot of the, 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 the kind of the, the teachers who teach around this area will, will talk about, will tell them the what, but not the how. Yes. It's like, I, I haven't got the time to just for you to give me the overview of your system. I want to know well, what it is and how I can use it. And I'm, mm-hmm. you know, actually willing to exchange something for that because that's yeah. of value, but don't kind of dress it up as it's going to be valuable when actually yeah. you and I both know that this isn't. Exactly. It's like an extended sales pitch with an overview of information that might be useful for someone who's never Mm-hmm. run a business and they're on day one of their business yeah. mm-hmm. um but someone who actually needs information it's not yeah. going to help yeah it, it, exactly and uh and the other thing about tra- i'm on a roll now um, yes. the, the other thing about transparency which i think is more of a rather than a tactic is more of a general thing is the people who show up as perfect yes and i i don't mean you know you share every trauma that you're going through i mean i'm actually and you're as well but kind of pretty mm. private in terms of sharing stuff going on in our, our private lives i don't kind of go yeah. and talk about you know i had a row with my husband or or anything like that but i do talk a lot about the challenges that i i have in my business i i, I show up and tr- I always have certainly my intention is to give a much more rounded view of the reality of running a business and some of the the pluses and some of the the downsides but the thing is that if i see somebody like um like tony robbins Mm. look at tony robbins he's all teeth and (laughs) with the the, the body that he's you know and he there's no fear and there's no no, no, no. and you know you see so many people who have kind of modeled that stand there's all these pictures of them on the beach or at the beach house or at the school Mm. or hey look at me i'm in malibu and here's my beautiful wife and here are my beautiful children here's my ferrari and here's my yacht and all of that stuff and that either says to me you have never experienced any hardship in your life Mm -hmm. or any self-doubt in which case i think you're a cyborg and because that's not real or you're so unself-aware yeah or you're hiding a lot of the reality because as humans nobody gets a free ride nobody is Mm -hmm. just you know problem free challenge free mentally 100 percent fit all of the time Mm. and so for me that that says two things either I can't trust you because you're hiding your dark side. Yeah. Or I can't trust that you would know how to help me with my challenges mm. because if you've not had any yourself, how can you, if you've not actually been down in the dirt, Yeah. how can you show me how to dig? Exactly. Yeah. 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 And it's, there's no such thing as perfectionism. It, perfectionism mm. Perfection isn't real. So yeah. it's just so hard to relate to those people. And that goes back to that trust and connection and authenticity mm-hmm. and relationship building. If you can't do that with someone who's 
pretending to be perfect. Yeah. You just can't form that deep connection. And I, you know, I just wouldn't want to work with someone who doesn't seem real. No, because I, are they going to be judging me? If they really are perfect and do have everything figured out, then then how can they be compassionate to, you know, <laughs> messed up, still rough around the edges me? Because, you know, how, how can they, they do that? How can, I think it's hard for to have compassion. It's hard to trust that you won't be, be judged and found, found wanting. And that, that is a big thing that goes through the, the personal development industry that really gets on my work is this whole kind of, you know, peak performance and, <sighs> and all of that. It's exhausting. And it's, it's like those people that, that you know are going through a really, really tough time and you're saying, how are you? I'm oh, fine. I'm absolutely fine. Things are great. How are you? And it's like, come on. They're, they're not <laughs> fine. You've got some stuff going on and it's understandable that you won't be fine. No absolutely fine i'm just staying positive and it'll all be great and it's um yeah it's, it's not healthy apart from anything yeah yeah exactly mm. and now transparency sometimes shows up in much smaller ways kind of in the details so mm. it could be something as small as you know in a sales page they don't actually say what the price is mm. you have to click on the yes i'm ready to buy now before you can actually oh. see how much the thing is yeah. which i find annoying yeah, because uh, uh, that seems to be a, a, a thing. Oh, maybe it's just the ones that I've noticed recently, but the only way you find out the price is to click on the yes, I'm interested or the buy now. And it takes you right through to the PayPal transaction yes. page, which mm -hmm. even if it was a product, I'm like, yeah, OK, that's reasonable. I would pay that. It's like, that's so presumptuous. Yeah. Don't treat me like a child. I I want to know the investment because... I'm a grown ass woman and I need to know that. You know? And I have a budget. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I have a budget for training. I'm a budget for coaching. I'm a budget for marketing. Like yes. I'm, you know, I know how much I'm willing to spend on things uh -huh. like this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so I, I also have a really big problem and I know this is a strategic thing and I know a lot of people stand by this, but I can't stand when people don't put prices on their website. This has been a real journey for me, I have to say, because I was all about putting the prices on. And then mm -hmm. a couple of years ago when I, I drank the Kool-Aid and I went and signed up with the, the, the big coach and um, followed all of, all of her tactics and took my prices off my website mm -hmm. and... I'll be honest with you, I did get more people sign up for intake calls. Mm. But I also got a lot more no's. Yeah. Because, and it just felt all kinds of, of wrong. But, mm. and I have put my prices, uh, my prices are now on my website. I'm, I'm, you know, all about that. It does mean I get less, um, intake calls and less mm -hmm. interest, but those who do come on the call are much more likely to, yeah. um, to be able to make an informed, informed decision. However, I have a couple of, of friends who are really filled with integrity, are really fantastic coaches who don't put their, their prices on their, their website. And, and here is what they would say about it. Mm -hmm. So one, one of my friends is a wonderful coach who does really quite kind of deep work with people. She's a, she's a coach and she's a counsellor. So it's quite kind of deep therapeutic stuff that she does with folks. And what she was saying is that if she puts her prices on her website, the folks that she works with are desperately needing help, but in need of help, but really struggle to value themselves enough and to be courageous enough to take that step to to start on their, their healing journey. And what she was saying is what she found is that having the the investment on her website was a barrier to them getting on the call. But once she'd got them on the call, she was then able to explore all the options for them. And, you know, and then they could still make an informed decision once they had all of the information, including the, the investment. So she certainly doesn't do the kind of hard sell on a call. But for her, what she what she was saying is, I just know my people, they it, they will use that. They will use whatever they can as an excuse not to take this step because it's a big leap of, of courage for them. And I thought that was a really kind of beautiful reframe that I'd not really thought about it. I, so I, I know her and I know that she's not doing it from a manipulative place. She's doing it from a real place of, of love. And that kind of did change my view on it a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've definitely heard that perspective. And I, I was also talking once with a friend who does hypnotherapy work and we were doing a webinar together and someone asked about prices on the website and, and she and I had very, very different opinions. So it was great to 
mm-hmm. share those two perspectives on the call. Um, but she said, you know, the kind of work that she does, there's so many people doing it that people will go online and look for the lowest price rather than seeing who they want, who's the best person mm-hmm. for them or who they connect with or, you know, that kind of thing, mm-hmm. because it's such kind of a, a common topic and service to, to deal with. So mm. people just kind of Google looking for the lowest price. Um, so yeah, I get that. I just, from a consumer perspective, I would not write to someone Maybe. if I didn't know mm. what at least the, the range of prices yeah. were. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, i have just, I would just click away and not mm-hmm. work with them, mm-hmm. but I may be an odd one on that. No, me, me neither. I, I wouldn't. And I'd also be super nervous even having a conversation with somebody until they tell me the price. Because what I, I think we all have, there's also an element of money shame as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so I would, oh, it's, it's one of my worst nightmares of kind of getting caught and they, they tell me a price. It's just like, that's way out of my budget. And now yeah. I'm having to say that's way out of my budget and I'm carrying all this shame around it. And, you know, I, when I was going through the phase where I didn't have my price on my website, I did have an intake call with somebody and I told her the price and she went, ah, what? And Ooh. it was such a awful moment. It was horrible. I felt like I had put her in this really embarrassing position because the mm. price was way out of what she was expecting. She hadn't, she had no clue what, what kind of coaching cost and she was super embarrassed Mm. And I felt so bad. And that was a real turning point for me. I never want somebody to, to be in that position again when they're, you know, they're, they're kind of just backing out, out of, of the call because, mm. yeah, it's horrible. I still kind of get that, like, ugh, feeling yeah. when I think about it now. Yeah, and it's also, I feel like I don't want to sign up for a discovery call with someone just to find out their prices no. because I don't want to waste their time and I don't want to waste my time. Um, I just want to know, you know, just tell me. Mm-hmm. I'm an adult. I can, I can, you know, make a decision based on yeah. a number of factors, <laughs> including <Yeah>. the price. <laughs> Another thing we were talking about in terms of lack of transparency is people trying to sell you on their secrets. Oh, yes. The seven secrets to oh, getting a steady really? stream of clients. The seven whatever. There are no secrets. There are like, no secrets. you know, whatever thing you're selling is a secret, I'm sure there's someone else on the other side of the planet teaching the same thing in slightly different words. Yeah. You're not that unique. Yeah, this this isn't, you know, cutting edge surgery that we're doing. <laughs> this yeah. isn't no, some NASA invention. This is, you know, pretty standard, um, usually kind of, you know, stuff that there are any number of people doing. There are no secrets. If there were, they wouldn't be charging, you know, $9.99 or $19.99 mm. or whatever it is. There, there, there just aren't. But this idea of... I have this, I have the secret and I'm not going to give it to you unless you, I, I, the whole thing is just kind of there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It, it, it's that gatekeeping thing. Like I have the secret and I'm going to keep it to myself. Mm. I'm going to just hold on tight until you give me X amount of money and then I'll give mm. it to you. Yeah. Yeah, it's the worst. Actually, one of my friends, um, Max Daniels, she's a fantastic um, coach who helps people around compulsive eating, get over compulsive eating. Mm. She is so transparent. She, as part of her um, email sequence, when you sign up with her, she tells you her exact process. Mm. She gives the, you a list of the books that she, uh, all of her methodology comes from. Um, and she says, you can totally do this on your own. Mm-hmm. But it's way easier if you, you hire me. Yeah. And yeah. And, I think that, and it makes yeah. me kind of just love her all the more because, and, yeah. and she's doing really well because, you know, we've said this so many times. It's not information that we need. It's people holding space and accountability and sharing that energy for us. And sometimes, you know, channeling stuff or giving us different perspectives. It's, it's not some big dollop of information that someone can bestow on you. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And I, I like what you said about, um, people saying, you know, you can do this on their, your own, but it will be faster and easier if you yeah. work with someone else. And that's something that I always say as well with the mindset work, you can absolutely mm-hmm. train in something yeah. that will help you reprogram your beliefs mm-hmm. and do it on your own. 
I do a ton of work on my own, but I also work with other people because it helps me see stuff that I can't see. So I think that's really, it's a very different side of the coin from I have the secrets. It's, yeah. you know, you can do this too, but mm -hmm. it's going to take you a while longer. Yeah. It's, it, it's the difference between do you come at your work from the place of people are broken and I will help fix them oh, yeah. or you are whole and I can help you to boost you up a little yeah, bit. Exactly. It's that, that yeah, it's, it's one of those kind of fundamental things about, you know, what, what is your belief system around, around the healing work that you do or the helping work that you do. And what really pisses me off is that the arrogance of the people who are, well, you're broken and I have what you need to fix you. Mm. No, in, in my world, nobody's broken. Yeah, I agree. And we're I agree. All broken as one or another, you know. We're all we're all whole, and some things make our journey on this planet that bit easier. Yeah, and there's huge amounts of growth that we can do, and we will do it on our own time. And sometimes we need a, a teacher or a, a healer to to help us along. And sometimes it's time for us to to walk that path alone. And you know, we're all independent beings and we we can do that we we have choices we are not children we are adults and yeah. so much of the marketing stuff out there is around teaching people as as you know approaching them as children yes yes yeah rather than approaching them as equals yeah yeah i think that's such a good point mm. So you it's had like, um, Stella Orange on your, your podcast yes. not so long ago, and I, I yes. love Stella's work. And I, I love that she talks about the hero's journey. Yes, and yes, yes. I love that. The idea that each of us are, you know, each of your potential clients are on their own hero's journey. Mm. They're the hero of this story. You can maybe be the, you know. You're the person. supporting yeah. Person. They meet along the way who can, you know, says I've walked this path through the forest before. Let me, let me, let me show you. Or maybe you can, you can help them put together a bag of medicine or, or something. But ultimately they are the hero of their own story. Yeah. And that's such a nicer, more empowering, respectful way of approaching all this. Yeah. Rather than you're broken. Yeah. You I'm going to fix it. I have the power. Yeah. I'm the guru. I, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be a guru. <laughs> no no i don't no me neither <laughs> i'd be a rubbish guru yeah so, oh my god so the other thing that that has annoyed me recently about lack of transparency was this thinly disguised telesummit invitation that i received by someone who's putting together an interview series and gift giveaway and you know it sounded really interesting i was like great i've never heard of this woman before you know it'd be really nice to connect with someone new sounds like fun and then i get to the point where she says you know the interviews are 30 minutes and each featured teacher will share the event with their email list of 5000 plus creating a promotional audience of 100,000 plus. And that was when I was like, oh crap, it's, you know, telesummit and I have to fulfill certain requirements and with my list and, you know, send a bunch of crap out to my poor list. And, and that was when I wrote back and said, sorry, it's not a good fit. But I was just so disappointed because it's like, God, you know, if you think I'm interesting enough to have on your thing, then like, just invite me, you know? Although I understand that's not the way telesummits work. The whole point is to get people on your list. So you need people with big lists, but like, ah. Sorry, I'd accidentally muted myself because my dog had come in. I'm talking when I go, no, I, I'm, I'm, I will edit that. Yeah, I hate that kind of telesummit. And I couldn't work, I couldn't quite put my finger on what I hated so much about it. Apart from the fact that it's even just inherent in that is, I'm only going to be your friend if you've got enough friends that yeah. know, makes it worth my while. And it's like, yeah, yeah if, if actually you do genuinely love my work and think it's so important, because they always write you this, yes, <laughs> thinking yes. you are female <laughs> about yes. how amazing you are. It's like, well, then surely it's irrelevant how big my email list is. Um, exactly. Exactly. And that's the thing. She starts out this email saying, I recently came across your mindset alchemy and I love your message. I realize we don't know each other, but I feel very aligned with your message. If you feel very aligned with my message, why does it matter how many people are on my list? You know, when I interview people for my podcast, I don't say how many people are on your list, you know, how many people do you like you. Like, you know, I just, if I like someone, they're on. It's about connection to me. It's not about like, how many friends do you have? Are you the cool kid on the block? Yeah, it just sucks. And have you ever had it when you, 
you've agreed to partake in the Tele Summit and then they send you these kind of hassly emails. I'm on your list, Joan, you've only sent it out one time and it's like, oh, this is like, I work for you now. And Ew. I don't want to be sending stuff out to my list, to yeah. my community, unless I know it's going to be a value to them yeah. and so you know there's so many variables in that how do I know who else you're going to have on the summit is it going to be an actual useful summit or is it just yeah. going to be a string of what could have been podcast interviews strung together the Kelly Deals who I uh, have worked with a fair bit in the past year did, mm-hmm. has a fantastic it, it's an interview that she did with someone called Dawn Sarah who has kind of reinvented the Telly Summit and we can link to that in the, yes. the show notes and she basically lays out what is so messed up about the existing Telly Summit model and that it's very transactional the content is usually pretty crappy yeah. it's all designed just as a list building exercise for the host The emphasis is not on providing value for the participants very often, but about how quickly can I, can I build my list? And that's how it's promoted as a tactic to a lot of entrepreneurs. And what Dawn has done is she's kind of redesigned that that Tally Summit model in a really, in a really beautiful aligned way which is all about the very first thing is what kind of experience do you want to create for your participants and you build out from there and Mm -hmm. she is a fan of if it's all possible you pay your speakers rather than it just being you know quite shallow interviews do something more in depth do a mixture of kind of classes or kind of you know just content that people wouldn't be able to get anywhere else Mm becomes a community experience so there's like each day there are there are workbooks and there are kind of q a sessions on the days that it's broadcast and there's no requirement for people to share with their their list there's also no requirement Mm -hmm. to a list of a certain size but what she says is, but actually because the quality and everything is so good and it's, so, it, you know, it's so different from the traditional telesummit model that actually most people are more than happy to promote it because it's a quality um, yeah. thing that they're, that they're part of. And I, th- I think that is far more congruent with the way that you know, we want to be changing this, this online world, moving away mm. from it's transactional. What can I get out of it? Yeah. And actually put in the, the, the users at the forefront, the clients at the, the forefront, the center of it. Yeah. And making it more of a, a collaboration. Mm. It's, you know, let's get together and do this thing and yeah. see how we can help yeah. each other. So how do you think entrepreneurs can be aware of their level of transparency in business and how, how can we be more transparent in our businesses? I think, I think there's a lot to be said for honesty. Yeah. And, and for, oh, you know, we've talked about authenticity a a lot in the the past. And I think that's, that's always going to be a bit of a movable feast and it's going to be dependent on, on your level of what feels appropriate for you. So I know that there are some people who are literally naked on the internet. You know, there's, there's, I can't remember that. Is it Marcotti who, who sends out pictures of herself basically naked? Very tasteful. You know, there's no nipples Mm -hmm. involved and things, but it's like, whoa, that's, that's way too much transparency and authenticity for, for me um i you know, but my, my approach to to transparency is if something has gone wrong i apologize and explain mm-hmm. if you know I, I i try and be very upfront about the you know the good and the bad Mm-hmm. I, I talk regularly about, I still get scared regularly. I still cry mm. on a regular basis. Things will go wrong. There are challenges. And this, you know, these are the things that I do to help me through that. You know, mm. like having community around me, like having, you know, <laughs> getting a dog because I was turning into a, a hermit and just you know, <laughs> sat on my desk all day. Just b- being a lot more kind of realistic about, about where it, where it's like my experience of and also where my my kind of knowledge base comes from and my where my opinions come from what are the what is the legacy that i'm i'm kind of standing on you know what what informs my work what are my values what are my beliefs because then because i i think that there is there's also something that is told a lot to people is oh well don't you know talk politics or religion and don't reveal too much about yourself because that's going to be a turn off for a lot of people Mm. i i I say fine because i want to be work i know i do really good work with people who are aligned with me and i do really crappy work with people who aren't and so i would sooner show people 
the the pertinent bits of who I am so they can again make an informed decision and if it's not for them then that's fine because they're not children they don't you know they they don't have to be persuaded or cajoled or some kind of bait and switch into Mm. me I I don't want to work on that basis I want to show the the pertinent important bits of me you know if you want someone who's super into systems is really really organized is positive every day you're probably not going to enjoy working with me (laughs) <laughs> if you want someone who has a bit of a sarcastic sense of humor who laughs a lot of her own mistakes who is you know really good at getting creative in the moment and strategy and talking you know big ideas and and how we can channel our, our own kind of personal essence and values into our businesses and build businesses that are really super aligned if maybe not always that shiny then you know i'm your gal that that's that's my jam and but if you don't tell people if you don't show people who you are they they can't make a decision on that so that that's one of the things that i've become more and more committed to over over the years is mm. yeah i i, I i'm going to show you who i am what's important to me i i yeah tell you what my values are on my website um uh, yeah, I, video i think is 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 good yeah. in terms of being able to let people see you sharing your opinions but also things like um, it's saying, you know, this isn't for you if yes. I work with people who are. Here is the, the cost to work with me. This is what's involved. This is what you get. One of the things that I've also kind of been much more conscious of in the past kind of six to 12 months is being much clearer on my boundaries. Yes. Going back to an earlier podcast yeah. that we had. I was um, just going to say. Yeah, which makes things a hell of a lot easier. Hmm. And the more transparent you are about your boundaries, yeah. the more effective they are and yes. the easier it is to form a, a clear relationship with mm. people. Yeah. Yeah. Not overselling, but mm. then at the same time, not underselling either. Having, having yeah. a kind of a solid sense of, yeah, this is my zone of genius. This is what I love to, to help people with. And, and this is the stuff that, yeah, I'd recommend you went to someone else if that's what you want. <laughs> <That's what I mean. laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. How about you? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's also really important. I think, as you said, I'm not the kind of person that just lays it all out there, but I'm also not the kind of person who pretends to be perfect. And I think that the more I can share about myself with people, the better, it, the easier it is for people to make an educated decision as to whether or not they want to work with me. And I would not want someone to sign up with me and then be like, whoa, that wasn't what I expected. I thought she was someone else. Because that also feels very manipulative, withholding parts of yourself, withholding signs of yourself or facets of yourself so that you can appeal to a wider audience. Yeah, yeah that wouldn't feel good for me. No. And I think it always comes out as well. It just leaks out. Yeah. You know? So how can we know if we're actually being transparent? You know, maybe sometimes we think we're being transparent and we're not, or how how can we know that? I go back to that. I mean, for me, it's, you know, I'm very kinesthetic and a lot of it is, yeah. is very kind of body based. So yeah. if something's feeling off in my, in my body, it tends to be that almost like a, a line throughout through my, my torso. Mm. Um, that's a sign that's, that something is off. I don't know. For me, it's, it's, it's an instinctive thing and it's also yeah. an evolution. I have a real kind of visceral physical response to when I'm not being in integrity or I'm not feeling in alignment. It feels icky. It feels unsettled in my body. Mm. And so that has become a compass that I've, I've paid attention to more and more. So for me, I, when I asked you that question, I, my mind instantly went back to that horrible MLM crappy situation that I was in many years ago. When was this? It was when I was training as a coach, so almost seven years ago. And just feeling like, you know, she was telling me what I needed to do and I was making the calls and I just felt awful in my gut. I just felt like a horrible person because I wasn't being clear about what my intentions were and what the situation was. So it's, just like you said, for me, it's it's a gut feeling thing. And I also get that gut feeling thing when I'm approached by people. So I don't know, maybe a couple of years ago, a friend of mine whom I hadn't spoken with in a long time sent me this Facebook me- message and was like, hey, you know, I haven't seen you in a long time. I've got this great thing. And I came back to her and I said, you know, I'd really love to meet up with you. But I'm also really not interested in a network marketing thing. I've never heard back from her. So yeah, I felt kind of bad about that. But but I think being transparent about 
what I'm interested in or how I'm interested in engaging with the other person, I think is also really important. Like I would have loved to catch up with her, but I was really not interested in a sales pitch for this, whatever it was that she was doing. So, yeah. Mm, it's interesting. Yeah. Have you ever had a situation where somebody has called you out on it? Because I'm just thinking, I, went, I, I hope I have the, the, you know, the sort of friends and, and, and kind of peers and colleagues who would say, you know, I think maybe you could be more transparent about that. I've never had it actually happen, but. Yeah, no, no one's ever, I can't think of a time when someone said that to me. I think transparency is a really high value for me. Mm-hmm. And I, it's something that I've always always really valued. I was just thinking back to my first business with the eco hotels, like because I was in charge of reservations and sales and the website and marketing and all that. And I was also on site so I could see the times that people had booked a holiday and weren't pleased with the place. That was where I think I learned to avoid problems you give them as much information as possible. So I created this incredibly detailed list of frequently asked questions based on things that I knew people were displeased with or unpleasantly surprised about. So yeah, I feel like this transparency has been a really important part of my business for a really, really long time, back to the beginning, 1999, because it just made everything easier and it felt like the right thing to do. You know, we had such a unique product and service that was the kind of thing that like it was Marmite, either you loved it or you hated it. So the more information people had, the easier it was for them to see whether it was right for them or not. Mm. I know. I think, I think that's interesting. I also think, yeah, we, I think transparency, I would, I wouldn't have necessarily even said it was a value. I just think it's almost something I can't help. Cause I think of the number of times. So I've kind of, even back when I worked in office, kind of gone into a meeting and go, I'm really sorry, baby had me up. I've had like three hours sleep. Where are mm. we? And it was like, you know, yeah. and boss is taking me aside going, next time, could you just not say that you've only had three hours sleep? <laughs> but now I will turn up to a webinar and say, you know, really sorry, I've had like, you know, tech day from hell. And yeah. I can remember meeting you once in London and going, okay, full disclosure, I forgot to brush my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I hadn't noticed. It was all good. <laughs> But it's okay to say that because I, I don't think that's too much information. And I think it yeah. gives people context for where you're coming from. And people are going to be so much more compassionate if they know that you've, you know, had a bad tech day or, or whatever. Because things aren't perfect. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think we have solved the whole transparency issue for the internet. Exactly. <laughs> you now have all the information you need yes. to go out and be transparent in business and life. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> And if you have any questions, just get in touch. <laughs> yeah, drop us a line. Thanks, Holly. This has been really fun. Yeah, I loved it. I'm so glad we did this topic because mm. it's something I've been thinking about for the last couple of days. And yeah. I thought this is a good Joe and Holly topic. Yeah, for sure. So thank you for listening. And like I said before, if you have any questions, you can get in touch with us, joe at joecasey.com and holly at hollywharton.com. Ask us any questions. Tell us what you think. What are your views on transparency? We would love to hear from you. Indeed. Have a good day. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Drop me a line, as I said. Let me know what you thought about it. You can email me at holly at hollywharton.com or you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Get in touch. I would love to give you a shout out on the show. And I would also love for you to join me in my private Facebook group, Business Mindset Alchemists, so we can continue the conversation there. Podcasting is such a one-way conversation. I've just been talking at you Uh, Joe and I for the last almost hour probably. So I'd love to get some feedback from you in the group. Business Mindset Alchemists is a group dedicated to exploring business mindset and how you can get the mindset you need to achieve your dreams. I would love to see you in there. So please go to hollywharton.com forward slash group and you'll be redirected to the Facebook group. Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, please leave a quick review on iTunes. It would mean the world to me. You can visit hollywharton.com forward slash 233 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you so much for listening to the Business Mindset Podcast. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for the topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and learn more about business mindset, join my private community for entrepreneurs at hollywharton.com forward slash group that will redirect you to the Facebook group. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave a quick review of this podcast. It just takes a minute. Thank you so much.